All right, um, so I just introduced myself and Celeste. Um, in the crowd, there's various people. Derek Sheets um, and is a teacher from Broward County, Florida. Uh, Clifford Snow um, is with OSM Seattle and uh, Central uh, Salish Sea. And Brian DeRosha, Mapping DC. Maggie Colley is here. Um, she's with Teach OSM. Uh, Steven Johnson, obviously, with Teach OSM and myself. Um, so the agenda today, um, we're going we're gonna to work through a couple different things. Um, what we're looking for is more experienced mappers getting, in, getting involved in their community and working with teachers. Um, so we'll talk about that, um, and we'll go over these different topics as, uh, as it relates to that. Um, so things to consider. There's a lot of constraints in, in the high school, and I, I, Celeste will start, start off talking about this. Um, but, uh, but you learn about that, and uh, it's a lot different than working, you know, organizing a community mapathon. Um, a lot of teachers only have a certain amount of time that they can contribute to this. They have an existing curriculum, and they have to get over the hump of, I'm not comfortable doing this. So you have to make them comfortable. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And I think that's really where experienced mappers can come in and, uh, and, and help us out in doing that. So when I first met Sean, uh, it was about five years ago, and he came in and, in the mor early morning and said, hey, Celeste, I got this great thing. I want to introduce it to you. I'd like to use it in your AP Human Geography classes. And when he showed it to me, I said, this is a great tool, but I just don't have the time. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out, I always I would say, how is this going to help improve learning for my students? How is this going to help them? Uh, taking the time to train them, to get an, to get an account, to train them, and uh, to get them to do this. And so uh, he, we, we kind of went our ways, and then uh, I came across, uh, learned about HOT, and that's where I went ding, ding, ding. Uh, that was kind of the, the epiphany where I said, wait a minute, we can take, uh, now we can, we're teaching these sort of uh, uh, topics in the classroom, now we, this can be an extension activity, and the kids can start, because they're learning about all these topics, how, how can I help, how can I help? And so I reached out to Sean and said, okay, we got to do this, and um, I need your help. So uh, one of the things that was kind of the things is uh, talking about time. Uh, it, teachers have a lot coming at them. Uh, we're given new power, uh, uh, grading systems. Uh, you got to meet these standards. You got to do this, this. Uh, so we're constantly learning about new technology for a variety of reasons. So adding open, doing open street mapping, which to many people that are experienced mappers might seem very easy, is just another task, and you might give, show, it, show us how to do it, but we'll say, okay, that's great, and we put it on the shelf for another day, and we never really learn it, we never really internalize it, and so when it's time, when we sit down and say, okay, I want to do this, you get a little nervous, because when you have to stand in front of 30 kids and pretend that you know what you're doing, but you have no idea what you're doing, uh, that's when the experienced mapper comes in and says, yes, you can, and this is how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so training is, is very important, um, and, and also um, the purpose behind doing the work. Uh, you know, it really needs to be sold to teachers uh, to do this, because this is asking them to do something extra on top of what they're required to do. Um, and so, I mean, from my experiences, you know, there's, in Massachusetts, we get uh, nor'easters a lot. And so we get school cancellations. There's different things that pop up uh, for teachers throughout the year. Um, what I do at the beginning is, is I sit down with Celeste or, or the other teacher that I work with um, and, and go over their existing schedule for the year and see if there might be gaps that they are looking to fill with something else. And so then tying in what they're doing at that time in their curriculum with you know, map features that fill that theme. So they might be looking at population and migration, and you might want to map areas that are looking, you know, that, that are subject to uh, refugee uh, you know, uh, movement or, or something like that. Um, so being creative in that, in that uh, component is, is required. And so this, this slide here just shows us um, that teacher tra teachers training in geography, uh, a, a lot of the human geography teachers um, a, a good portion of them don't have any uh, GIS backgrounds. Uh, so, I mean, it's important they don't even, they, they, they're not familiar with, with uh, geographic, um, you know, data. And so 
this is a stepping stone into that. Um, so actually training them is important. And there's programs that have, have been born out of, out of their lack of experience in that. And there's a lot of teachers, uh, if you are talking to a lot of the AP Human Geography teachers, uh, that have never uh, taken a class in geography or any GIS training. So you have to understand that when you bring this tool to us, it's kind of um, overwhelming. And for some, for those teachers, which is very few, that have a geography background, they're kind of, okay, I can get this, this is, I, I can do this. But for those who have had none, um, it becomes very uh, daunting and kind of um, makes you a little apprehensive to even go forward with it. So that is a, that is a challenge um, to, to getting uh, open street mapping into the classrooms. And so we talked about this a little bit um, earlier, but understanding of the limits uh, in the classroom, um, really what we see experienced mappers being able to offer to, to this, to this uh, you know, teach OSM's charge is, you know, contributing, offering different entry points to the workflow. Like some teachers might only have one day to do this. Some other teachers might, like Celeste has often done, um, after they're done with it, so they take uh, AP Human Geography exam in June? May, they take May. it in May, and uh, we have about five weeks. So a lot of my open street mapping projects happen after those five weeks. Um, I do, I sprinkle a couple in here and there right before breaks, because the kids think it's, oh, this is fun, I don't have to sit and listen to a lecture, or I'm not having to write a paper, or I'm not getting assessed. Uh, so this is a, another great way of getting them involved and making it fun, and I turn on music, and we have treats, and they think it's a party, and so, um, it, so I do it right before our breaks, and it's a, it's a good, and I try to, tr try to make it so that it's a theme that's going along with what we've been covering in the classroom. Yeah, and I kind of take that opportunity to introduce them to OpenStreetMap, you know, show them the applications of what the data um, that, that, that is OpenStreetMap, what it's being used for, you know, how, it's connect, how it connects to their lives. You know, Lyft uses it. You know, you know these different companies that they know about, Pinterest uses it. You know, all, all these things, they can tangibly understand that and say, okay. And then also, you know, from the humanitarian side, you know, Hurricane Irma, uh, or, or what, whatever, you know, something that connects to their lives, how it's being used, and then they understand the purpose behind it. But I think different entry points and levels of commitment by teachers, it needs to be, you know, offered to teachers, you know, after understanding how much time they, they have to do this kind of thing. And so that's what this slide is, is showing, you know, a different, couple different things, you know, up in the top left, it's uh, Hurricane Harvey, and then down on the bottom, you know, the use for, for the Harvey Relief Project uh, that was going on pre and post Harvey um, and why, it, why, it is, why it's important. And then the Texas Colonias, uh, Stephen and, and, and some others did some work uh, uh, on those. And so, you know, connecting to actually their lives and, and how it matters is important. Um, and then connecting it with, their, with the teacher's curriculum. So AP Human Geography curriculum uh, is spelled out here down at the bottom. And I mean, it's, it's just uh, the sections that they work, flu work through. But a lot of teachers, they need to connect exactly to their curriculum. And so thinking of map features, thinking of you know, um, you know, different things that fill their, fill their themes um, you know, for agricultural and rural uh, areas. You know, as Clifford gave a talk about rural areas yesterday. So, I mean, there's all these different things that they can actually map roads in rural areas. And it, and it connects in some way to what they're doing in the classroom. But then bringing in outside components like census data or agricultural census data um, enhances their, what, their, what their experience is in the classroom. So, um, one of the things that I find as a, as a teacher is convincing the students to do it. And many of you are in here and you're, you're here because you love maps and you love open street mapping and GIS and all that. But when you have 14, 15, 16 year olds uh, and trying to convince them um, and for them to A, understand what it is and B, to want to map, um, it, it's a challenge. And so one of the things that teachers have to do is, well, is to convince the students um, what's the purpose, where are you on this. Uh, and I, one of the things that I have found is um, talking about this is where you are. And I talk about the flow of how this community is working 
and where they are in this community, where they're going to fit in as a mapper. And I think that that's really kind of the why are you mapping? This is what you're doing. Instead of having a bake sale and raising money and sending money to an organization that will buy supplies, you can take what you've learned and you can sit at your computer and you can map and you can help people collect data that can make smart and efficient and effective decisions. So you have to really sell that to the students about why they're mapping. So a lot of times I always like to, I, I kind of say to Sean, if we're looking at a project, um, uh, especially when um, we were looking at HOP, and I'm always like, I love it when the, the organization that's looking for mappers has pictures and articles that I can pull off very quickly and I can talk about what's going on. And then the students are like, okay, let's go, let's help. And it makes things go a little easier. Uh, you can get, uh, if, you, if you're mapping and you don't have any of that background information, you kind of, the teachers have to kind of look for it, which is not a big deal, but you, it's, sometimes it's, it's, it's the catch. You kind of got to sell it to the kids so that they get eager. And then not only are they going to want to do it in the classroom, but the goal is that they'll continue to do it, that they'll continue outside of the classroom and eventually continue to want to do it for the rest of their life. Um, and be part of that OSN community. So um, things like that, like pictures, articles, when you're posting projects are amazing because the students are like, wow, this is amazing. How can we help? And so um, another component that fits, fits great within, within the US uh, educational system is service learning. So a lot of uh, requirements now to even graduate high school, uh, you have to complete some kind of community service project. Uh, and, and I think that should be in every state, but it's state by state, and that's a requirement in Massachusetts now. And this, for, this fits in 100% with that, with that requirement. Um, and actually, one of Celeste's students last year, or two years ago, last year, last year thank you, um, that went through AP Human Geography uh, uh, ran her own mapathon uh, with the community. So like that's where we're going with this is, is, is that's what we want. These are the kind of things that we want to see be born out of introducing them to it, um, it, it with, with, the, with the class. And that's the other thing I, I wanna, I mean we're starting with the AP Human Geography teachers, but it's also getting other teachers uh, that have to teach this service project because this, uh, for example, in Massachusetts, I will not be teaching this class. But if you have more like human, AP Human Geography teachers in the classroom, um, that can reach out to those teachers, uh, other social studies teachers that have this, you can teach them about di digital citizenship. And I think that that's really important because um, it's teaching them how to be part of a community um, that collects data so that they can make smart decisions, um, not, not just globally but locally. And I think that that's really important. And if you can get other teachers uh, within your, uh, in your district. I know like in Massachusetts we have uh, there's very few AP Human Geography teachers. I don't know how many I don't know how many AP Human Geography teachers actually are using OpenStreetMap besides me and this other teacher that Sean works with. Um, but we're trying to reach out to other teachers because this is coming down the pipeline, and they're going to have to figure out ways uh, and being if, uh, economical about it. Um, you know, there's, a, there's always a civic responsibility that teachers have to show, and teachers are looking for those ways, and this is a great way of doing it. And so Teach OSM really is trying to, to help train teachers, to, to get teachers comfortable in the classroom and doing this. But with that, we need more people involved in, in, in doing this. Um, uh, experienced mappers, um, we, we, need, we need them in, in, in to be in different areas of, of the states or, or outside the states and work with uh, local teachers. Um, another thing, you know, there, there's, there's a couple different tasks that what, what experienced mappers might be able to offer to, to this, um, you know, to teach, teach OSM program. And then also, too, we need, we need funding. Um, to, there's different organizations uh, that are offering teacher trainings regularly, like the Council for Social Studies and Council for Geographic Education. AGS every year um, offers teacher fellowships to their annual uh, 20, Geography 2050 um, conference. And we need to, I, I mean, from my, from my perspective, this is a way to give back to the, to the work, to OpenStreetMap. And it's also to, to introduce it to students at a younger age. They're introduced to an open source project. 
Um, they actually understand a little bit about what, ge what geographic inf um, data is uh, at an earlier age, and, then, and they also see that there are careers um, in, in this field. Um, myself, I didn't even know about that until I got to college, so I'm trying to change that, and so that's why I do it. So. And the, uh, the other thing, too, is, is that I, I think it was yesterday somebody said we were talking about um, the technology uh, moving so quickly and changing so quickly and then in, in bridging that gap to academia. I mean, we're on the forefront. We're trying to prepare these uh, students for your workforce 15, 20 years down the line. And uh, a lot of times we can't keep up. Um, with all the changes that are going on. So it's nice to have somebody when you're partnering up, and I can call Sean up, I can send him an email saying, I don't understand this, I got this far, what's this mean? Um, and having that partnership and having that support uh, goes a long way. And I don't think that I would be as far as I am, and I still feel like I'm in the infancy stage of doing open street mapping in my classroom, but I wouldn't have probably um, be doing as much of it and be an advocate for it if it wasn't for Sean's support. So reaching out to those teachers and saying, hey, let me help you. And um, we've, we've taken small steps, but I keep calling them saying, okay, I want to do this. Help me out. I want to do this. And so I'm getting more excited. I'm getting more comfortable with it. And, uh, and, and uh, what's exciting is, is that my students are like, oh, yeah, we did that last year. We're going to do it again. And I actually had a student come up to me that was part of the, the Mapathon, wasn't even in my class, and said, Mrs. Reynolds, in three years um, uh, for my senior project, I want to do that community Mapathon. Uh, and I hope we can continue to do it every year. So even it's, it's even reaching out to the students outside of my classroom. And I think that that's really important. And that gets me excited because um, uh, that's, that's the ultimate goal, is, is to get kids to think about their uh, spatial awareness and, and, and skills and ability uh, as they move forward in, into their careers. So this is what it looks like in the classroom. Um, the top left is, is a classroom, actually uh, another classroom on Cape Cod, not, not Celeste, uh, in Barnstable, uh, Massachusetts. And then the, the bottom right is, uh, is a classroom in, in Brooklyn, uh, New York. Um, so with that, we thank you all for coming, um, and we'll take any questions. I have not, no. So the question was, um, have you seen the directed edits policy that's been proposed? And I think um, one of the things I know, I've talked to Stephen about this and other teachers, uh, one of the things that when we're in the classroom we have to stress to our students about, you know, that's part of being a, a good citizen and being responsible and we go over and over and over. And uh, uh, the Teach OSM through AGS set up a mapping contest just recently and what was really nice is they had a form for students to read. And I went over it in class and I said, listen, if you make an, you know, you need to you have to, you're held accountable so when you hit I agree and I and on this form this is what it means um, and I think that's a good start and because you got to teach them somewhere and and it starts with us sure absolutely I think that would be great. So, so the, the, the idea is to hold on for, for, the, uh, for the proposal and, and include Teach OSM work in it. 
Hey, Cliff. I was just thinking one of the things we might be able to do here is to separate the actual editing of the map with the teaching. So maybe set up like a, a, a ghost OSM server. I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah, we don't have much length here, so I'll come over here. But I, I would talk with Mark Farah. He's not in the room here anyway. Uh, last night, and he was, uh, DevSeed is in the uh, process of developing, like, OSM sandboxes. And uh, I don't know too much about it, so if you see Mark, you might want to ask him. But the notion is that there's a safe space, like a safe s sandbox, where uh, people can contribute to the map, essentially, and go ahead and map. But it's in this, like, holding chamber, and uh, until all the edits are verified and, and uh, for quality, then, then they're subsequently uploaded and synced back up into uh, OpenStreetMap. There's some, there's some things to be worked out, I think, uh, like if somebody else is editing where, you know, if there's two concurrent edit, two different asynchronous editors and trying to conflate the things, the conflate the uh, features. But um, I, I think that's a notion that, that could be really useful to Mm -hmm. um, to educators. One other thing, um, I know that there's been, um, I don't know how many of you have been involved with um, some of the uh, work uh, with the welcome, OSM welcome mat. Um, there was a notion that we needed to have some way to uh, onboard new users, kind of a welcome package so that people could understand, you know, where to go for resources and kind of consolidate all of this stuff in one place where it's readily accessible and digestible uh, by teachers and, and new, uh, new mappers. I'd submit there's a version for teachers specifically to help uh, teachers um, you know, get acquainted with uh, you know, a, a one-stop shop, I suppose, for getting started with uh, OpenStreetMap. So. I just want to say that one of, the, one of the things that I think that is most important is that um, it's very important if you're reaching out to your teachers, trying to sell them on the purpose of the mapping um, and showing them um, you know, why are you mapping and how this information is going to be valuable. Um, because once again, many of these teachers don't understand that process. And that's really important. You're, you're talking to somebody, huh? I mean, it's basically coming up to a stranger in a, str in a street and saying, oh, open street mapping. And they're like, what's that? Um, so that's really, really important if you're reaching out to teachers and wanting them to try this. Uh, a lot of teachers, once they learn about it, are very excited about it. But I think that that's, um, you know, it's uh, making sure I know, for example, I tend to, st to stick to global projects because of time. Um, when you get into the ID editor and with students, I get nervous that they're going to make incorrect, um, labeling something incorrectly, and it's another layer. Um, of teaching, of making sure they're labeling <clears throat> the buildings and the roadways correctly. Uh, and sometimes that, I, I haven't done, I'm just doing a local this year, That's and I've been doing it for three years. Um, because I get, I get nervous that my students are going to make, <clears throat> excuse me, mistakes. And, um, and they probably are, and, <clears throat> excuse me. And the other thing too is um, making sure, when you have 30 kids and there's one of you running around, and sometimes they just keep clicking. And so you, you are trying to manage quality control, and it can be very difficult. And sometimes you just say, that's it. I can't do it anymore. So I've been mostly sticking to global. So that's something to kind of think about. Um, and the only reason I'm doing locals is because Sean's like, you can do this less. You can do this. But it's taken several years for me to get the confidence to do a local mapping project. Yeah. She had a Well, my suggestion to you, and, and maybe some of the other teachers can give some help too, or some advice. Um, if you're reaching out to teachers, you know what kind of teacher are you reaching out? Are you reaching out to a technology teacher versus a geography teacher versus a history teacher or social studies teacher? Um, and a lot of times they have, at least in the state of Massachusetts, they have um, our frameworks right there. 
So if you just go through the frameworks and say, boom, um, just even one framework saying, hey, I know you teach about X, Y, and Z. Uh, I think I have something that I could introduce to get your students engaged and become dig digital citizens and, and pitch it that way that um, doesn't require any money. It's a little bit of training. And uh, I think you're really, you know, I'd really like to work with you on that. Um, and if you just find one, uh, I think that's really important. The other thing, too, I think is very important is that uh, emphasizing with teachers about the spatial skills that they learn. And I think that that's something where it, not only is this activity going to help them in social studies, or it's also going to help them with math. It's going to help them with um, science um, and getting that spatial development. Um, and if you can kind of talk to the teacher about that, oh, OK, even working with math teachers. I know that sounds kind of out of the box, but really think about that. This is going to help with spatial skills. Um, and um, it's an engaging activity that puts kind of, you know, takes what they're learning and what they're trying, the skills that they're trying to develop and applying that. And I think that's really important to sell that to teachers. So the question is, where can teachers get training and, and what is the cost? Um, so that's something that, that, uh, that we're, we're still working out. Um, there, there is uh, training this afternoon. There's two workshops for teachers. Um, but we're, we're trying to partner with different organizations that connect to teachers, like NCSS, NCGE, um, the, these different organizations, AGS, um, to, to offer trainings and workshop-style trainings uh, to teachers. Uh, it just hasn't come to fruition at this point. We, we are open. We have reached out in New England. Uh, we kind of we kind of find out. Sean and I tag team. Hey, I hear there's a conference coming up. Let's see if we can put a proposal in for a workshop, um, which has kind of led to one thing after another. You know, you meet people and network. Um, so we mostly have done workshops back and forth. I know Teach OSM does one at the AGS um, conference, uh, and we're trying to work with these organizations to set one up. Uh, like NCSS, we're saying, should we have it in Florida? Should we have it in Texas? Should we have it in California? Um, <laughs> and, then, and so, and that's the thing. We're, we're trying to work with other alliances, which that's kind of a mess right now, um, and trying to say, hey, we, we are willing to come down and, 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 and do a workshop and help teachers and get them excited about this. Um, and it's just networking and trying to find out where we can go and, and how, you know, when we can do it. Um, where the teachers will show up and when we can be there. Something to discuss this afternoon. Okay. Um, I'm a high school teacher. I have done the AGS. It'll be it's like a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Just enough to whet my appetite. I see plenty of opportunities in the curriculum to introduce it. My thing that I feel that I, would be very helpful for me is to have a mentor that when I have a question, rather than me standing And that, that's that exactly it. I, to get your feet wet. Go ahead, so Steve. So experience matters if you're good at it. This is where you can plug in. And if you're in a community, it's like teachers uh, need help to you know, take it to the next level. This is exactly the point where you can plug in to your community. And I would just say this is an awesome conversation. If you're interested in having more of it, we're going to have a birds of a feather tomorrow at noon upstairs in 410. So um, come and find us and talk about it. Yeah. Noon? Uh, look at the feather? board. The, there's two boards, a job board and birds of a feather. Tomorrow. Okay, we, we can have the conversation this afternoon at the workshops for sure. Right. No, we hear you. We, we, we understand that there's a need. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's, that's the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate goal. If we can get enough teachers out there 
then they can teach other teachers, and then they can teach other teachers, and it's a, it's a snowball effect. That's, that's the ultimate goal, absolutely. So if you have an organization or you have a contact person that you know of, you can either give it to Stephen, you can give it to Sean and I, it, it doesn't matter. We will, we will do our best to, to get there and to do what we can. Yeah, let's talk this afternoon, for sure. Celeste, Sean, thanks a lot. Thank thanks. you.